Hi, I'm Lea Greenberg, MD, PhD, Associate Professor in Residence at the Departments of Neurology and Pathology at the UCSF Memory and Aging Center. I'm a neuropathologist, so it means I don't go to the clinic. So what I do, I examine the brains of people who were seen in the clinics and then they pass away and they donate their brain for research. We are very interested in my lab to uh, figure out where in the brain these nasty diseases like Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease start building up in the brain. We know that our brain is very resistant. So when the disease starts to develop, it takes about from 10 to 20 years to something uh, really uh, happen, to become visible, to people start to losing memories or misplacing objects. So we wanted to know, okay, so what is going on in the brain during all these years in which the disease is silently building up in the brain, but we don't know about it. And uh, our lab was very pioneering on this. We could demonstrate that a specific part of the brain uh, that's actually here in the neck is called brainstem. is one of the first areas that start to uh, show this very nasty disease. We are trying to develop the uh, tool to be able to detect these very, uh, very first changes using MRI. So it. We, we envision that it works like a mammogram. You will go in your 50s to the doctor, you will get a very quick MRI, and uh, then you come back in five years. If there is no change, you just go home. If there are some changes, now it's time to start being worried about it. So uh, this is uh, what we are developing now, and we think it will be uh, affecting directly patients very soon. Where I came from, to be a scientist is not a career. So I never thought I would be able to be one. It was really to be comparable or to be an astronaut. All the kids want to be, very few will be. So I had my traditional uh, trajectory. I went to medical school and then I did residency. And then because of an accident during my residency, I started doing research. And after some time I came abroad, I had this opportunity, I got a scholarship. And then I could really see that this is real, you can be a scientist. I got a lot of setbacks. I got into situations in which people look at me and said, look, you, you are not cut to be a scientist. Or people told me, you know, your English is not good, so you know, you cannot write a paper, this is a problem as a scientist. Uh, on the other hand, I had a lot of people who said, you know, I think you are creative, I think you have good ideas, I think you have the drive and they helped me and it paid off. I feel very lucky because I think my career is very vocational. I wanted to do it, I prepare myself and I have the opportunity to be doing that. So every day when I wake up in the morning, I'm happy to come to work. Every day when I finish my day at work, I go home and I cannot stop. So this passion of uh, knowing more of uh, being able to crack the code of what is causing this disease and interacting with all the colleagues and students and patients really make me move forward. And one thing that really makes me move forward, I have three kids and I think it's so important to uh, show them this example that we can make a difference in the work. You have to put an effort. I'm not available for them all the time. But I feel that uh, the time I'm putting here is not wasted time. So this is what moved my career. And I hope I will be really able to contribute more to improve people's lives with the research I'm doing.